everyone, welcome back. I'm Samantha and today we're going to be continuing our look at how people got dressed in the early 17th century. Specifically, we'll be looking at the clothing of a common man here at James Fort with the help of my friend Sammy. Sammy is here starting out in the basic undergarments. He has a linen shirt, which is the first layer next to his skin. It reaches below his knees because during this period, men and women don't wear any lower sort of drawers or undergarments on the lower body. It's the shirt that serves as the undergarment for both the upper body and the lower body. So that's why it's long like that. Uh, as I said, it is made of linen, so it's absorbent. It can absorb the sweat and oils of the body as he's going throughout his daily tasks. And then he can put on a new shirt, and that's how he'll keep his body clean. He also has stockings that cover his legs here, and they're held up with garters. Since we don't have elastic in the 17th century like you might have in your socks, we need garters to help those stockings stay up. And Sammy's also going to want to put on his shoes. Shoes for men and women during this period are actually very similar in style, and they have straps that come over the top of the foot called latchets, which are tied to keep the shoes in place on the feet. Now we're ready to keep getting dressed. The basic clothing for men consists of breeches, which are the covering for the lower half of the body, and a doublet which is the fitted upper body garment that is really common for men. Now, it's, it's usual to have the doublet and breeches fastened together at the waist, either through being tied or pointed, as it would be called in the 17th century, or you could have hooks and eyes that keep those pieces together. So they're not wearing belts in this period to keep their uh, breaches up, they're pointing or tying the pieces together. So it kind of becomes a one-piece garment after you fasten the doublet to the breeches. There are many different styles of breeches that are popular during this time period. They can vary in their length or how full and gathered they are. Sammy is wearing a style of breeches called Venetians, which are full and gathered at the waist, and then they taper a little bit down to the knee. And this was a really common and popular style in the early 17th century. His breeches fasten with buttons to keep them up, and then he's going to put the doublet on. And the doublet also fastens with a lot of buttons. And there are a lot of buttons that have been found archaeologically over at the original fort site on Jamestown Island. Buttons could be made out of a wooden core that's been wrapped in thread, or you also could see metal buttons or even glass buttons. Sammy's doublet and breeches are made out of wool, which was a very common fabric for clothing in the early 17th century. Wool was a major part of England's industry and a huge export for them. And it's also a very practical fabric because it's very durable and it can help regulate temperature, whether it's warm or cold, because it insulates and it breathes really well. On a colder day like today, it's going to be great for keeping Sammy warm. You'll notice that at the collar of Sammy's doublet, there is a, a white ruffle, and that's a ruff. And that was very popular accessory for men and women during this period. Um, it's just a strip of linen fabric that has been gathered, and so it creates this sort of figure eight ruffle around Sammy's neck. 
there are actually special irons that were used to iron the ruffle shape into the ruff. And some of those irons have been found over at the original fort site. Well, Sammy is just about ready to go about his day. And we're going to have him put a, a cap on that's similar in style to mine. And this is a very typical head covering for men and women during this time period. And Sammy looks quite like a very nice gentleman. <laughs> but really, this is very typical, common clothing for men during this time period. It might look fancy to us in the 21st century, but this is very typical clothing for the average soldier, common person here at Jamestown. Now, I think today, because of the weather, we're also going to have Sammy put on his cassock, which is similar to what I have. It's a loose-fitting sort of coat, and it's also made out of wool, so it will help keep him nice and warm. It's important to remember that during the early 17th century, they had a climate that was quite a bit different than the one we have today. They were actually experiencing a little ice age, so the temperatures were quite a bit cooler than we're used to. So wearing wool and layers of wool was really important. Well, I'd say we're ready to go. We hope you enjoyed that look at 17th century men's clothing. Be sure to check out our other videos in this series and on other topics relating to life in the early 17th century and 18th century. You can also find us on other social media like Instagram and Facebook. Be sure to like and subscribe.